Hello, and welcome to another Safer Zoom web webinar. Today we have a presenter from the University of Massachusetts and, and, at and Amherst, um, and I'll hand the floor straight to her. Hi, everyone. So I'm going to be presenting on the research that our group and I have been working on at UMass titled Driver Attitudes and Behavior in the Presence of E-Scooters versus Bicyclists. Um, to start, I'll first go into a little bit of the background of the study. So the number of available e-scooter systems in the U.S. has ris risen drastically in the past few years. It went from zero in 2017 to 252 in 156 cities in 2022. And this doesn't even include the systems limited um, systems available in colleges and employer campuses. This is the one. These are the ones limited to cities. They're a convenient mode for first and last mile transportation. And they're used for varying purposes, and those are mostly utilitarian. However, despite their popularity, rider safety and infrastructure reported concerns relating to e-scooter parking and sidewalk riding has not been extensively studied, and crash records involving e-scooters are limited due to underreporting. And here's just a chart showing that rise in e-scooter usage. You can see it in the light blue from 2018 to 2022. So with this research, we're hoping to answer three questions. So one is, does the type of infrastructure e-scooters ride on affect driver behavior when motorists interact with riders? Two is, do attitudes of drivers towards e-scooters and their riders influence motorist behavior? And then finally, how do these attitudes and behaviors, behaviors towards e-scooters versus bicyclists compare? So now I'll go a little bit into some of the existing literature that we looked at. So first we started, at, started with the e-scooter side of the research. So due to lack of crash data, much of the existing research has been based on emergency department data or incident report data. Um, a study that was done at UCSD Medical Center found that 90% of the study patients suffered from craniofacial injuries. And this is usually from people tipping over on their e-scooters. Um, and then many more serious injuries were found to be linked to alcohol or substance use. Um, there was another study that found that around 20% of the riders admitted were under, in, under the influence. Um, incident reports were also a common source found in our research. So news reports from various countries leading in e-scooter use, like the US, Austria, and Denmark, show that a lack of regulation causes incidents such as conflict over space and irresponsible riding. Um, on the other hand, many e-scooter riders were unaware of these regulations. So, for example, a study that was done in Indianapolis found that less than half the participants knew it was illegal to ride on sidewalks. And then finally, some research was found on preferred infrastructure for e-scooter riders, but the results for these varied. So one study found that e-scooter riders typically travel along protected bike lanes and then next preferred sidewalks and then the shoulder of a neighboring street or unprotected bike lane. Um, on, the other on the other hand, um, uh, trajectory data from Austin, Texas uh, found that there was mostly roadway usage and then sidewalk usage and then bike lane usage. And then finally, one study measured rider frequency in particular and found that there was higher frequency vibrations um, from concrete pavement compared to asphalt. And this implied that there were higher levels of comfort when riding, riding on um, vehicle lanes actually. So then to compare to the lack of, to compare for um, e-scooter riders due to lack of um, research, we then looked into the bicyclist side of things, which is why I became e-scooters and bicyclist research. Um, from the driver's perspective, we found that there was a negative stigma with bicyclists in their operation alongside other moving vehicles, where those who express, um, and then those who express negative attitudes towards bicyclists um, had faster and more dangerous overtaking speeds. Um, other drivers, while they might not necessarily exhibit aggressive driving, usually express discomfort when driving close to bicyclists. And this was especially true for people um, struggling with visual depth perception, which would overtake at slower speeds than other drivers would. And then similarly, driving participants um, from a study who biked weekly passed in closer proximity and at slower speeds. Um, those who um, were exposed to bicycling expressed better attitudes towards it. And this is in accordance with the safety and numbers phenomenon. And then for the infrastructure impact on safety, um, one study found a three to four time lower risk with 
bike lanes present versus not, and this was based off of some crash data that they collected. Um, cyclists find separated bicycle infrastructure typically safest, such as like off-road multi-use paths, um, because of the increase in comfort levels from being separated away from the vehicles. Um, it was also found that cyclist volumes increase in protected bike lanes, meaning that more riders are comfortable using that infrastructure. And then finally, familiarity levels impact many different driver behaviors when operating around the infrastructure, including speed and compliance. So now I'll go into some of the methodology for the study. So for the study, we brought 20 participants in, and then we gave them consent form in the first half of the survey, which asked for demographic information and driving history. Um, we then got the participants calibrated to our eye tracker device. Um, participants were then given a practice drive, and that was just to get familiar with the vehicle, along with seven short experimental drives, which were each about a minute long, so they were very short drives. And then finally, we gave participants a post-study questionnaire that asked about e-scooter riding and bicycling experience. Um, this questionnaire also had um, a series of perception statements towards e-scooter riding and bicycling that we asked them to score from one to six based on how much they agreed with those given statements. So now I'll kind of dive into the driving simulator portion of the study. So our goal was to assess driver behavior in the presence of varying e-scooter and cyclist infrastructure. And the participants were particularly assessed on whether they scan for the rider or not, which was tracked with the eye tracker device, and then how they adapt their behavior if they do scan. And then for the adaptive behavior, we chose to focus on speed and maximum lateral distance change for our data. And then these results will be compared to the survey results to see if there's any correlation between the two. So the study was broken up into five experimental scenarios and two control scenarios. There were three experimental scenarios for the e-scooter portion, uh, for the e-scooter riders, one in the bike lane, one in the rightmost side of the travel lane, and then one riding in the sidewalk. There were two experimental scenarios for the bike rider, um, one in the bike lane and one in the rightmost side of the travel lane. And then finally, there were those two control scenarios I mentioned where there was no e-scooter rider or bicyclist, but one um, scenario had bike lanes and then the other scenario did not have bike lanes. And then when we were administering this to participants, we used the Latin square um, to randomize the order in which they all received these scenarios. So there's a sort of a visual of just how the study looked like and where everything was working. Um, so on the left is the le on the left is kind of a visual of the intersection we're working with, and this is where the experimental portion of the study mainly took place. This is the one with the bike lane infrastructure and the one without the bike lane infrastructure. Just it looks exactly the same, just without the bike lanes. And then to the right are the three um, areas in which the e-scooter or bicyclists were riding on. So the top being on the bike lane, the second being on the sidewalk, and the third being the rightmost side of the travel lane. And then for the eye tracking, we use the Toby Pro Glasses 3. Um, and then here's a little visual. You can see a little e-scooter rider on the right um, highlighted there. So here's a visual of what the experimental portion of our study appears as. Um, for each scenario, we asked the drivers to operate at about 35 miles per hour and set the e-scooter and bicycle. Uh, and then we set the e-scooter and bicycle if one was present to a speed of 15 miles per hour. Um, we also had the e-scooter and bike begin moving at the same distance away from the vehicle for each scenario, which was 70 meters. And then this is just a little visual of what that looks like, except the vehicle will then proceed to take the right turn into the other part of the intersection. Um, we additionally place an uh, e-scooter or bicyclist operating in the opposite direction of the vehicle a little before zone A as an indicator for the participant that one might be approaching. Um, for the eye tracker and speed data, we divided the experimental intersection into two zones that you can see here, zone A, B, and zone C, D. Zone A, B is 100 meters and 60 meters from the turn while zone ZD is the last 10 meters before the turn and the first 10 meters after the turn. Um, zone A was selected based on where the e-scooter rider and bicyclist were roughly first 
identifiable and identifiable to the driver, excuse me. Um, for the eye tracker movement, we checked whether or not the participant glanced to the right at any point within zone AB or CD. And then for zone AB, we also checked if they glanced specifically at the e-scooter rider or bicyclist if one was present. Um, and then for speed, we measured the average um, within zone AB. So additionally, we measured the change in the maximum lateral distance um, in zone AC. So as the vehicle um, entered zone A, we first measured that distance away from the um, e-scooter rider or bicyclist, and that was sort of our initial distance. And then as the vehicle continued moving along that um, part, portion of the intersection, we then measured the maximum, um, the maximum distance away from the e-scooter rider or bicyclist before making that right turn. And then we just subtracted those two and that was our change in um, lateral distance for that portion. So now I'll be going into some of the hypotheses that we had. So first focusing on the speed portions. So one is that speed in zone AB is lower with less separation from the riders, the riders being the e-scooter riders or the bicyclists. Two is that speed in zone AB is lower when e-scooter riders are present versus, versus when bicyclists are present. Three is that speed is lower when there is an e-scooter rider or bicyclist present in zone AB. And then finally, speed is lower when there is an e-scooter rider or bicyclist present in zone ZD. And then we had some hypotheses for lateral distance as well. That being that the maximum lateral distance change in zone AC is larger when there is less separation from the riders, the riders again being the e-scooters or bicyclists present. So then we also had a set of hypotheses that correlated the survey portion of the study to the driving simulator portion of the study. This one in particular had to do with e-scooter bicycling experience to the um, driving simulator data. So these hypotheses were that the drivers who ride bicycles or e-scooters frequently um, present lower speeds in zone AB and larger lateral distance changes in zone AC when bicycles or e-scooters respectively are present. And then this portion of the hypotheses is particularly for the attitudes of the study. So this is where the, we had the participants um, rank the perception questions, uh, statements from one to six. So first we have the drivers who agree with the following statement, that being if a driver, an e-scooter rider or bicyclist collide, it is typically the fault of the driver, traveled at lower speeds in zone AB and had larger lateral distance changes in zone AC when the bicyclists or e-scooter riders are present than those that did not agree with this statement. And then we also had the drivers who agree with the following statement, that being that e-scooter riders slash bicyclists should not hold up car traffic, traveled at higher speeds in zone AB and had lower, shorter lateral distance changes in zone AC when bicyclists or e-scooter riders are present than those who did not agree in the statement. And then finally, we had that drivers who agree with the following statement, that being that e-scooter riders or bicyclists should have to pass some sort of operating test, just like drivers do, traveled at higher speeds in zone AB and had shorter lateral distance changes in zone AC when bicyclists or e-scooter riders are present than those who did not agree with the statement. So now I'll be going to some of the results of the study. Um, I'll just briefly be going into the survey portion. So here are some results from that. So um, we found that from the rider and driver perspective, um, participants preferred infrastructure treatment was the bike lane or sidewalk, which is what we expected from the study. Um, for e-scooters, we found that a few more preferred sidewalk, but for bicyclists, there were significantly more participants who preferred the bike lane as their choice of travel. And so now I'll go into some of the simulator data. So in terms of glancing behavior, in zone AB, we found that all participants glanced to the e-scooter or bike, and they also just glanced to the right at the infrastructure. And then in zone CD, all participants glanced to the right. Um, and this was important to consider when we were analyzing our results because it shows that all drivers were aware of the infrastructure or the e-scooter rider and bicyclists when they were driving along this intersection. So now, now I'll go into some more of the results. 
So all the speed results were compared using uh, T-tests at a 95% confidence interval. So here the hypothesis was partially supported. So the degree of separation did influence speed for e-scooters in the sidewalk versus in the bike lane or road, but there was no significant change in speed when the e-scooter was in the bike lane or road. And then to the right here, we have a violin plot um, showing the distribution of average speeds for all participants per scenario for zone AB. Um, we also found that participant speed did not change when the bicyclist when it is in the bike lane or the side of the road in zone AB. Um, this did not support the hypothesis that speed will be lower with a decrease in separation. And so then we have the hypothesis two, speed by micromobility user presence. So here the hypothesis was partially supported. So the participants drove slower around the e-scooter in the bike lane than the bike in the bike lane. Um, the speed changes, however, were not significant when an e-scooter was present in the road versus when a bike was present in the road for, in zone AB. And then additionally, we found that speeds in zone AB were lower when there was an e-scooter rider or bicyclist present in the bike lane versus the control scenario with a bike lane. Um, we also found that speeds in zone CD are significantly higher for scenarios that have a bicyclist or e-scooter present versus control scenarios with no micromobility user. Um, this means that the presence of micromobility micro did generally have some impact on driver speed in the study. Um, however, um, however, we when we um, compare the driver speeds in zone AB for only control scenarios um, with and without a bike lane, there was no difference observed. Um, this could imply that the presence of bicycle infrastructure alone might not be affecting the driver behavior observed. So now we have some of the hypotheses for lateral distance. So like the speed results, all lateral distance data was compared using a t-test, again, at a 95% confidence interval. Um, here, the hypothesis, hypothesis was partially supported, so the degree of separation did influence um, lateral distance for the e-scooters in the sidewalk versus in the bike lane or road, but there was no significant change when the e-scooter was in the bike lane or road, and this correlates with the results we saw for the speed data. And then we looked into the change in lateral distance for bicyclists. So participants' lateral distance was greater when the bike was in the road versus in the bike lane in zone AC. This did support the hypothesis that change in lateral distance would be lower with a degree of separation and didn't correlate directly with the speed data. So now to go into some of the um, results for the um, experience portion of the survey compared to the driving simulator. Um, we found we found that there was no statistical significance when comparing the differences in speed in zone AB or lateral distance change in zone AC between drivers who are experienced bicyclists or e-scooter riders with those who are not. And then we have some results for comparing the attitude portion of the survey um, to the driving simulator results. And here we found that drivers who believe that e-scooter riders should have to pass some sort of operating test just like drivers do has significantly larger maximum lateral distance changes in zone AC than those who did not support that statement. But there was no statistical significance found when comparing um, drivers, who, drivers who agree with the rest of the tested attitude statements and their difference in speed in zone AB or the lateral distance change in zone AC. So now I'll be going some of the conclusions of the study. So, First, we found that there's a strong preference for bicycling and e-scooter riding on bike lanes and sidewalks. And this is from both the rider and driver perspective. We found that separation of drivers and e-scooters or bicyclists um, does not induce higher speeds um, unless when traveling on the sidewalk. And then we also found that the presence of a bicyclist or e-scooter rider induces lower speeds at their intersection um, and segment but this is only when they are riding in the bike lane. Additionally, we found that a smaller separation between drivers and bicyclists results in greater lateral distance changes between them. 
we found that the frequency of e-scooter uh, e scooters or bicycles um, use does not uh, significantly affect driver speed or lateral distance changes. And then finally, um, driver attitudes were not found to be associated with the changes in driver behavior, other than agreeing with the need for licensure, licensure for e-scooter riders um, that resulted in the larger lateral distance changes in zone AC. So now I'll go into some of the future work. Um, first, we would increase the number of participants for further analysis. Um, right now we have 28, but we would like to um, increase that for future study. Um, this would potentially allow for some other relationships to be revealed through our results. Um, next, we would improve the right turn geometry. Um, as you can see in the video I have attached here, um, some drivers struggled making that right turn along the intersection. So that's something that we would improve upon if we were to do this again. And then finally, we would assess the impact of bicyclists and e-scooter demand on driving behavior. Um, meaning that we would like to see what would happen when we have more than one bicyclist or e-scooter in the scenario and whether or not that impacts speed and then change in lateral distance. And that is all I have for today. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you very much. Uh, to our attendees, you can uh, unmute yourself to ask a question or type on chat. Hi, this huh? is uh, Colin. Mm -hmm. Hi, hi, Lila. Uh, hi. I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Yeah, that's um, right. But yeah, oh, thanks. Do you um like hear about like drivers? Obviously, I try to keep an open mind towards um micro mobility device like e-scooters. I noticed like mm -hmm. a lot of e-scooter riders. Um, sometimes they'll have like a a second passenger, like another kid, like on the e-scooter. But a lot yeah. of times, like, you know, I live in a residential neighborhood and I try to keep an eye out for like um, e-scooters, like on turns, but sometimes they come up real quietly and they're not as loud as like, like motor devices, obviously. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I was just wondering if you hear anything about that from like the drivers, because uh, a lot of times the, the, the e-scooter riders will cut the, the, the turns real sharp, like you mentioned the right and the left turn. So I really have to like eyeball the road before I, I make a turn because I don't want to hit somebody, especially at night too. So, yeah. uh, so I try to drive during the day. So that's something I keep in mind because I don't want to like, hit like an instant, you know, uh, e-scooter rider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of um, research on driver behavior or driver perception towards e-scooters that existed. Literature was really limited, but I know from personal experience and then other drivers that a lot of people are not not a fan of e-scooter riders for the same exact reason. Um, but that's all I can really say in terms of that. Okay, thanks. And I enjoyed your presentation. I liked it. <laughs> Thank you. If I may add um, something in response to this, um, Don and uh, Leila, um, thanks for the question, Colin. So I guess another reason we could have, I suppose, anecdotally here some of those, um, you know, issues from some of the participants. But um, the truth is that the majority of the participants are um, individuals that live uh, live in uh, Western Mass, and there's not that many e-scooters in our area. Um, so you know, we might have missed some of those. Uh, comments and uh, stated challenges uh, just for that reason because they're not that common um, in the area where we um, recruited most of the participants from. And a lot of the um, I, a lot of the participants that we had were UMass students and from my experience a lot of the UMass students are more annoyed with e-scooter riders and have more to say perception wise um, as a pedestrian than as drivers, because a lot of e-scooter riders will zip around campus and people are not really a fan of that. Um, so that could also have something to do with it. Thank you. 
Are there any other comments or questions? I don't see any. I do see your contact information, Leila, down at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for including that. Yeah. If anyone um, thinks of something or a question or would like to know more about this research, I'm sure contacting me would be fine. Um, with that, I will thank you for your great presentation and the whole team for the research and thank everyone you. who attended. So, thank you very much. All right. And with that, I think we're done. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye.